Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is May the 12th, 2020. Let's talk American football, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, like many people here, I've read my share of sports betting books, right? Many people disagree with what I'm about to say. It'll sound high risk. In my opinion, it's actually lower than average risk. In my opinion, based on experience and based on the leverage you get, the best way to bet the NFL is to bet NFL futures. Right? Understand. Futures offers you an opportunity to take the best teams in the league, the best, and to get them at greater than three or four to one odds. Understand, too, if you're proven wrong, if there's an upstart team that's not on your list of preferred plays at the start of the season, you can add them to your betting portfolio at prices greater than 10 to 1. So let's look at this season. Let's look at the odds as they were a few days ago. Right? In my opinion, there are very few teams. And I mean this. Very few teams every year that have a chance to win an NFL title. Right? Last year's Super Bowl involved a team that made the AFC Championship game the year before. The Kansas City Chiefs, who ultimately won the game, against the team, the San Francisco 49ers, who you could have gotten at much greater than 20 to 1 odds on NFL Futures last year, that was loaded with early picks. Right? Understand. Teams that don't have the talent rarely make it deep into the postseason. So right now, early on, and it's counterintuitive, what I hope people consider doing is taking some of the teams that are Goliaths, that have playoff experience, that either have great defenses or great quarterbacks, Kansas City plus 600, Baltimore plus 650, San Francisco plus 800, right? Folks, you're not going to get these prices later. If these teams win early as expected, I'm just telling you from experience that the odds on a defending champion like Kansas City Assuming no one major gets hurt. Pat Mahomes is not hurt. Travis Kelsey's not hurt. Right? Are going to drop to plus 400 or lower. Right now you're getting them at a plus 600. Let's talk about the NFL draft. You not only want to focus on what happened in the draft. I believe it's at least as important to focus on what did not happen in the draft. Now understand, Bill Belichick, a guy who's been around Tom Brady for years, right? In fact, a guy who inherited a first pick of the draft quarterback who had been to a Super Bowl, Drew Bledsoe. The Patriots did not draft a quarterback, did not trade or sign a quarterback, right, other than Brian Hoyer. So what they're doing is they're rolling with Jared Stidham. Now what I want people to consider, just contemplate this, is that Stidham, who sat out his first year just like Pat Mahomes did, I believe Mahomes play is one of the later games, but Mahomes was carrying a clipboard the first year. Steve McNair, Carson Palmer, 
This is how football used to be done. You would have a promising young talent and he wouldn't play much the first year. Aaron Rodgers. But Stidham did play in last year's preseason. And I can tell you at the end of last year's preseason, one of the better gamblers out there, Kenny White, Google him, started saying that the Patriots may have gotten the best quarterback from last year's draft. Google quarterback guru Jordan Palmer, Carson Palmer's brother. Google his comments on Stidham. Now keep in mind, Stidham's a guy who played in the SEC. You'll find out that Jordan Palmer is extremely high on Stidham. Extremely high. Now couple Stidham with the New England Patriot defense. Go to footballoutsiders.com. Go to Pro Football Focus. Look at their rankings of defense. Right? Understand the Patriots today have an elite defense. Folks, it's elite. It's among the very best in the game. Is it possible that Belichick, with a young quarterback who looked tremendous in last year's preseason, who, of course, quietly sat behind Tom Brady, but was involved in game preparation, was actually on an NFL roster practicing with NFL players. This is not the kid straight out of college. Right? He spent the year with an NFL playbook. Is it possible that the Patriots in a division that, let's be real here, is still a bit weak? Don't expect anything from the Dolphins for at least the next 12 months. Right? The Jets didn't do that well last year. The Bills... I know Allen gets them to the playoffs. I know they had a great defense. The question, though, is whether Allen has the accuracy, and it's still an open question, to be a consistent winner. He wasn't in college. You have a weak division. You have Bill Belichick with the division's best defense. Right? The only other team in the conversation in the division defensively is Buffalo. Right? Belichick has the best defense. He has a hell of a lot more money. Now that Tom Brady's gone, now that you're not paying your quarterback $25 million a year, he has a lot more money to plug a lot more holes. Right? I normally don't like to take first-year starting quarterbacks in futures bets. I'll just be blunt. But when it's Bill Belichick, a guy who won a Super Bowl early on with Tom Brady, right, replaces Drew Bledsoe with Tom Brady. When it's Bill Belichick, a guy whose alumni have done well Right? Wasn't it Bill who drafted Jimmy Garoppolo? Wasn't that Jimmy with a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter of last year's Super Bowl? You're going to have some experimental plays in futures. I believe one of the plays you need to consider are the New England Patriots, simply because you're not going to find, in my opinion, better coaching. Right? It's not just Bill Belichick. It's Josh McDaniels. Right. I want people to look at the Patriot record from last year. I keep hearing that Tom, you know, wasn't given enough groceries to cook a meal with. Look at the record. If they don't give away that last game to Miami, they would have gotten a bye, wouldn't they have? This is a high-performing team, not in the deep pass. This is a high-performing team as of the end of the last football season. 
I think the Patriots are worth a look on NFL futures. Let me just say, too, in reference to the draft. Now, I'm a uh, Pac-12 guy, right? I'm really a bit of a snob. I look at a lot of these quarterbacks coming out of these other conferences, right? Mitch Trubisky, etc. And I just feel more comfortable with a Pac-12 guy like Aaron Rodgers, Andrew Luck. I think some of the best quarterbacks recently. Drew Bledsoe, who I mentioned earlier. Troy Aikman, who won three Super Bowls. I just think because the Pac-12 seems to attract coaches who run pro-style offenses, the Pac-12 guys tend to be more advanced when they hit the NFL than these guys from other conferences. Now, I'll agree. The SEC put on a show in this year's draft class. I'll agree. Cam Newton, MVP. Dak Prescott is a franchise quarterback, franchise tag quarterback at least. According to the Dallas Cowboys, he'll be making over $30 million a year. I'm just telling you that if you look at Dak and if you look at Cam Newton, Justin Herbert, the Oregon quarterback. Folks, I'm not an Oregon alum. Right? The Oregon quarterback picked six by the Chargers. In other words, he'll be throwing the ball to people like Keenan Allen, Hunter Henry. <laughs> I believe that's the best pick out of this year's draft. This guy is an athlete like Cam Newton. Right? At least how Cam used to be. He's a serious athlete, and he's big like Cam. Right? He's also a cerebral quarterback, like Dak Prescott is. Now, I know the world is gaga over Tua. Right? Tua doesn't have Herbert's size, arm strength, athleticism. He just doesn't. Right? And, of course, Joe Burrow, full disclosure, Burrow beat me on a bunch of bets. He was so accurate in college, it was impressive. But Burrow doesn't have Justin Herbert's ceiling. I believe a year from now, it's going to be obvious that Justin Herbert is the steal of this year's draft. I view him as better than another Pac-12 quarterback, the quarterback of the Rams, Jared Goff, who got his team to a Super Bowl. Right? Herbert, stronger arm, more prototypical quarterback than Jared Goff. Folks, they throw the ball in the Pac-12. The quarterback has to make reads. Right? This is not a running back-centric conference. I know Christian McCaffrey is looking tremendous. Okay, fine. Certainly the Pac-12 has had its share of running backs, right? Um, I know SC alums are yelling, Anthony Davis, Marcus Allen, right? You know, okay, fine. Charles White, okay, fine. That's the history. I'm just telling you the Pac-12, and I'm a season ticket holder for a Pac-12 team. I'm just telling you the Pac-12, the last 20 years, has really started throwing the ball and the guys are really advanced. Ask yourself, has there been a more pro-ready quarterback in recent memory than Andrew Luck? And understand, for old timers, at Luck's school, Stanford, Andrew Luck, as good as he was, wasn't John Elway, another Pac-12 quarterback, right? Justin Herbert, to me, was the steal of the 2020 NFL draft. Let me just say, too, best pickup of a vet by a team. You know, never in my life, and I mean never, have I seen a 5,000-yard passer taken more for granted than Jameis Winston. 
Folks, Drew Brees is on fumes. The Vikings roughed him up in the playoffs. Drew Brees, let's remember, Teddy Bridgewater has a big contract for a reason. It's because he stepped in and took over that team for more than a month last year. Don't be surprised if that's actually not the blueprint for them. Brees is a little bit undersized. You know, we can blame the pass interference call. Drew Brees really wasn't great the year before last year in that playoff game against the Rams. Right? I think older quarterbacks might have 10 good games in them a year. I'm expecting to see Jameis Winston on the field in a division that he knows because he's played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? He's played two times a year against New Orleans, right? He plays every year in that New Orleans Dome, every year, right? I'm expecting Jameis Winston to play at least a month worth of games, for the New Orleans Saints, right? Again, I know he threw a lot of picks. I would argue that if you look at the film, some of the blame would be on game flow. In other words, his team was behind. It's the end of the half. He had to throw a Hail Mary and it gets picked, right? Some of it is on his wide receivers. I remember I watched a game where he threw the ball, and trust me, a Jerry Rice, a Michael Irvin, a Chris Carter would have caught the ball, right? His wide receivers weren't on that level. I believe Jameis will be able to correct the picks. I think with Alvin Kamara on that same team, catching balls out of the backfield with one of the best wide receivers in the game and Michael Thomas who can win jump balls I think Jameis is going to hit the next level I don't think the Saints have just found their current backup I think the Saints have actually found their future quarterback right and don't kid yourself I know there are a lot of people out there I know there's a school of thought that Jameis Winston is you know too happy-go-lucky and isn't cerebral enough, that's the word we'll use, right, to be an elite quarterback. That's a joke. This guy was a great student in high school, right? This guy got into Stanford University. He turned down Stanford University. What did it get him? It got him a national championship at Florida State, right? This is a guy who has won a national championship in college who has followed that up this past year by passing for 5,000 yards, right? I think the Saints committed a heist in getting this guy to sign on as the backup. I believe this is a better heist than even the Cowboys signing of Andy Dalton is a backup, and I believe in the Red Rifle, right? Let me just say, too, there was a lot of talk about Taysom Hill, and I know they gave him a contract at the end of the day when they needed to get a surefire backup. The guy they went with was Jameis Winston. Let me just close by saying NFL futures. Right now is the time to pick the expensive teams because KC won't be going off at a plus 600 in late August, right? And you want to make sure your betting portfolio gives you leverage with great teams, right? There'll be some upstart story. I'm intrigued by the Arizona Cardinals. There'll be some upstart team that starts the season 3-0. The Cardinals finished the season All right, I see Alexa has decided to intrude on my video. Let me just close by saying thanks for stopping by. Good luck.